Hello today and welcome everybody. Today we are going to be doing a false stat tutorial, going over the builds, and then afterwards we're going to go into try mode, check some things out, and then dive deep into when and when not you should be picking certain builds. So uh, there's three main builds, the auto attack build, the lightning discharge build, and the kind of hybrid hammer lightning mm. You know, auto you attack could be all out in there one cracking skulls right build now. that is it's such a troll build and i don't recommend anybody pick it but we're gonna go over it anyway uh let's go over that one first so we get it out of the way and then forget about it and never talk about it again because it belongs in the abyss because it is just horrible uh you'll start off with gathering storm uh quest every time hammering hits a hero increases you know what actually let's start off with the abilities Hammering. Throw a hammer out that returns and explodes. It deals 80 damage and slows enemies by 25% for 2 seconds. Reactivate the hammer and it will deal 95 damage to nearby enemies. Lightning Rod. Deal 107 damage to enemies and additional 75 per second for 4 seconds. So it's going to hit 4 more times, I think. Deals 100 <clears throat> increased damage to You know, you and me could be so out there cracking Barrel skulls. Barrel roll. Dash right forward or backward. It grants a 171 point shield for three seconds. Flight, this is what makes him a, a, a global. Uh, he doesn't have a mount and instead he flies over terrain. Uh, about every 75 seconds you can use this. It's really, really good. Maps like uh, Towers of Doom, Cursed Hollow, uh, any sort of map, Dragonshire, any sort of map that would require you to be somewhere for an objective uh, it's really helpful having false set because he can do it better and faster than other heroes most other heroes it's just like a dahaka could all right tailwind this is his trait uh you gain 15 percent increased movement speed after not taking damage for five seconds i love it that's great mm. you know you blast. Could be out there cracking uh, that's skulls his first right all mana 80 cooldown 120 seconds after a second deal 475 damage that's pretty good uh, to enemies in a long line. The cooldown is reduced by 30 seconds for every enemy hit. I hate Hinterland Blast. I think it's trash. Nobody should pick it unless you hate your team and you just want to slap them in the face. Just the other night, my team and I were playing a game and I we were playing a quick match because that's, that's the only reason I would ever pick it. If I ever pick this in rank, then I have no business playing rank and I should uninstall. But in this quick match, I use Hinterland Blast three times. I hit the entire enemy team, got the full reset, hit the entire enemy team again, got the full reset, and then hit two or three again. And guess how many people died? None. Zero of them died. And, you know, rightfully so, you know, it's you not enough damage. Be out there cracking skulls right Especially now. not for 120 seconds. Now, Mighty Gus, that's your bread and butter false stat. If you're picking this hero, you you should be picking this 100% of the time, and in no under no circumstances should you ever pick in or own blast. Mighty Gus, mana 70, cooldown 60 seconds. It allows you to be uh, using this all basically in every serious team fight. It push enemies away and slows their movement speed by 40%, decaying over four seconds. And it doesn't just push them away a little bit. Like a Morales grenade would knock you back a little bit, or a Sergeant Hammer knockback. I mean, this this gust knocks them back considerably far. All right, talents. Back to the build that's trash and awful. Go over it. Forget about it. Gathering storm. Every time mm -hmm. hammering hits a you hero, know, you and damage me could be out there cracking skulls and right return now. six mana. Be quiet, for that. The reward after hitting 30 heroes with hammering increases damage by 15 percent. <laughs> It's so bad. Number four. You're going to pick the basic attack heals. Basic attack heals for 20% of the damage dealt to primary targets. Boomerang. Increase hammering's explosion damage. It deals 100% additional damage. And hitting enemy heroes reduces their spell armor by 15 for 3 seconds. Mighty Gust. You have to do it. Flow Rider. This is where this silly hybrid build comes really into its own. While your trait is active, Tailwind, Falstaff's basic abilities recharge 100% faster. So 
the deal with this is you want to try to avoid damage as much as you can. You know, that you way you're you getting those cooldown reductions right as now. much as possible. And you can just keep chucking out this ridiculous hammer and stacking it while healing yourself with auto attacks. And it's just ridiculous. Airy Gust. This is the next part of it. Reduce Tailwind's delay. So it takes it down from 5 seconds to activate to 3. And um, that way you keep those cooldowns going. It also gives you a little bit of extra movement speed, which is great. It's 5% under a mount, so that's you're, you're basically mounted at all times. Level 20 wind tunnel, you know, that's just a given. Mighty Gust creates a, a wind tunnel for 4 seconds. Enemies caught in the tunnel will be periodically pushed back. And it hits, I don't know what it is exactly, but I would say it probably hits twice a second. So if you get enemies in, in a good... Place where you know, wedged you and me could be out walls, there cracking the skulls. Right so you, can, you can hold them indefinitely for four seconds. There's nothing they can do about it. Unless they have cleanses or you know, something like that. They can negate that. Alright. Now we've been over that. Forget it. Never go back to it. It's horrible. Now there's two main builds for Falstad. One is the auto attack and one is the lightning. Auto attack. Activate frequent flyer to gain 40% attack speed and tailwind for 4 seconds. So basically, if you are in a situation where you're going to be able to kill people, you're going to want to activate this, and you're going to want to get as many autos as you can. Minion kills grant 0.2 basic attack damage, and hero takedowns grant 0.5 basic attack damage. Now this quest is cool. I consider it a bonus. I don't think it's extremely necessary to focus you know, on this. You know, you and me could be a out any there cracking Any people that play this right game now. and are good are going to be worried about Soak, and they're going to be picking up Soak and not letting it go by. Any decent player will never let a wave of Soak go by unless, you know, they're saving a, a teammate from dying or securing a kill in the later game. Because in the beginning of the game, a wave of Soak is more valuable than an actual hero kill. So Soak is very important. This is a bonus, just like a Vala Gambit uh, on her attack speed build. And it increases her attack speed, but that's not really what it's about. It's just kind of a bonus. Same with this. It's just a bonus. Don't think that it's like live or die if you miss a minion or two on a wave and you don't get that extra basic attack damage. Number four, you're going to want to pick Hammer Gains. Basic attacks heal for 20% of mm. damage dealt. You know, you target. and me could be out there so, cracking skulls This right could be now. really useful against like a Zeratul, right? Because Zeratul is one of the main counters for False Hat. So normally, a Zeratul can just blow you up and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, with Hammer Gains, it actually can let you, allows you to stay in the fight and hurt him uh, pretty substantially if, if you kite well enough. It, 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 number four is good too if you are going to be in a solo situation. I don't recommend Falstad for the solo lane. There's so many more uh, heroes that are better than that. Bruisers like Artanis, and Leo, and Malthiel, and Dahaka, and you know, Rexar. All those are better if you're going to play a solo. But you know, if you get trolled and you know, your team doesn't pick a solo and you need to fill that gap, then this is excellent, and you should pick it because it'll you keep know, you in that you lane. You know, you and me could be out there back. cracking skulls right now. Secret weapon for seven. It's a must. Increase hammer ring, hammer ring's range by 30%. And basic attacks deal 75% bonus damage while hammer ring is in flight. What this is going to allow you to do is to hit heroes from a distance if you need to, or if you're close to a hero that won't necessarily burst you down, and you can stand next to them without the fear of dying you want to throw this out and you can get up to four to five auto attacks off with this bonus which is a lot of damage a lot of damage number 10 mighty gust been over it sustained wins this is where this build comes online uh if you have an enemy stitches an enemy diablo you know any of those high health pool heroes they they hate you you they know, absolutely you and me hate could you. be out there cracking skulls and right now. They don't want anything to do with you because you can chunk them down so fast they don't know what hit them. Basic attacks against enemy heroes deal bonus damage equal to 1.5% of the hero's maximum health. Increase to 2% while Tailwind is active. So if you're not taking any hits and you're pelting 
you know, an enemy hero, you might do 250 damage times five. You might do up to, you know, 1,250 damage. And then that bonus is going to take another 10% off. And that's just auto attacks. You know, your lightning's going to be on them too. And they're going to be taking damage from other sources. It's just huge. The percent gain is amazing. Now, this one's up for grabs. You can either pick Crippling Hammer. That'll increase the slow to 50%. And um, I don't know if it decays. You know, you and me could be out there hammer. cracking skulls right now. Ability hammering. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, yeah. It, it uh, slows them for 2%, so it doesn't decay at all. It never did, I guess. I thought that it used to, but I guess not. So that's great. It doesn't decay. Anyway, uh, shoot. A 50% slow is really, really good. It feels like an eternity. If you're that person slow, you're getting hit by a false stab who's doing bonus damage with his auto attack while his hammer is out. It seems like an eternity trying to run away from this guy. So that's one option. You can go with the slow. Um, I pick that a lot of times if I'm not in a situation where I'm going to take a lot of damage. Airy Gus, this is the other option. It reduces the activation time for Talon from 5 to 3 mm. seconds. And you know, the you and me could be so out if you're there taking a lot of damage right now. and you need to be a little bit more mobile, this really is the pick for you. You should be picking this so you're not taking damage. Wind Tunnel. You have to pick it. Now, when I first started playing Nexus Frenzy and I was new to False Stab, or I mean, when I first started playing Heroes and I was new to False Stab, I picked Nexus Fren Frenzy quite a bit. It increases the attack speed by 20% and the range by 1. I don't care so much about the attack speed, but the range, it's that's really, really good. And I could see in some situations where this this might be better than wind tunnel but that's probably only 10 percent of the time because the wind tunnel it's one of those epic alts it's one of the best it's definitely in the top five in the game it's just so mm. broken that you know you, you just kind of have to pass there cracking this skulls minute. right now all right so that's the auto attack build let's go into the uh, lightning build this is my favorite build um a lot of times you can get a little bit more damage out of the auto attack build, but you can get a lot of damage out of the lightning build too, and it gives you a little bit more freedom during your engagements with teams to get that damage out and not be in danger. Dishonorable Discharge. Reduce lightning rods cooldown by two seconds. That's a big factor in this. After three lightning rod strikes, subsequent strikes on enemy heroes increases damage by 1% up to 75%. Reward. After 30 subsequent strikes, further reduce lightning rods cooldown by 2 seconds. That's really good. So that's 4 seconds after you get 30. Reward. After hitting 75 subsequent strikes, take down mm. reset lightning you rods know, cooldown. You and me could be now the other day I got this quest completed right and I didn't get the reset um, on a kill that I had. So I'm, I, I don't know if it's bugged right now and Blizzard needs to address that, but that's something I encountered. Hopefully they fix that because... You know, if you're working really hard to get that, you you deserve to have that cooldown because it is a game changer, and you've you know you've, you you grinded for it. Now, the big now when you first started this out, and you're before you hit level seven, the only stacks you're gonna get are on the final two hits. So it's kind of risky. I would suggest putting your stacks on a frontline hero like a Joe or a Diablo or a Stitches because they're not going to care. They just don't care and they're going to most most of the time they're going to let you get your stacks off because their job is to be the frontline and take care of their team. Whereas if you mm. try to you know, step forward a little bit more and extend a little right more than what, you know, you would want your assassin to do and you put it on a Vala, you know, they're not going to sit there and take that damage. She's going to vault back and, and get out of the way. A Li Ming's going to teleport back and get out of the way. You know, say it was a false stat versus a false stat in a quick match. He's going to barrel roll back and nobody's going to take that damage. So until you're stacked, you know, fairly decent, you don't want to, you don't want to put it on somebody that has the evasion. Uh, number seven, we'll get into that. Number seven is when you can kind of put it on other heroes. All right, number four. Static shield. I pick the uh, lightning rod shield when enemy heroes 
um, are easily getting damage you know, off of me. Could be out there if I'm not taking right damage very easily and they're having trouble putting damage on me, I will actually pick hammer gains so I can just heal. Now, static shield, lightning rod grants a shield equal to 4% of false adds maximum health up to 28% for 4 seconds. So that's really good. So it negates a lot of damage, and people don't realize that when you're attacking them, and then they counterattack, that all most of their damage will be negated, unless it's super bursty. Number seven, charged up. Increase the number of lightning rod strikes by two, and it's range by 25%. So the extra two is going to allow you to accrue four stacks if you get the whole... You know, you um, and me could be out there off. cracking skulls Sorry, right now. Now, the range is great, too. It really helps you find that distance um, that you might need without putting yourself into danger. This is when you kind of come online. Of course, you got to pick Mighty Gus. Like I said, it's a given. Thunder Strikes. The build is fully online at this point. You are a killer. And if you know what you're doing, you're going to be able to harass and engage very aggressively and do lots of things. Lightning Rod deals 25% more damage for each subsequent strike. Now this math isn't going to be accurate, but basically you're going to you're going to start off with we'll say 200 damage and then the next hit will do 250. The next hit will do 300. And the next hit will do 350. Next hit maybe 420. Next hit 500, and you see, and it goes up like that. You know, you and me so, be out there cracking So, while this isn't right a percent health ability, I find it to be extremely effective against tanks a lot of times because, like I said, they just see that the lightning rods on them, and they don't care. They don't think it's that much damage, but then it, that that subsequent damage starts stacking, and before they know it, they've taken you know 3,000 damage, and they've lost half their health to a little false stack who doesn't even go percent health. Uh, I like to pick Airy Gust uh, for the Lightning Rod because with the Lightning Rod, you're not going to be standing or kiting a lot. You're going to be actually just moving and holding down the right click on your mouse and constantly moving your hero and getting auto attack here and there, but not a full blown kite like you would if you went auto attack, where you're going to do an auto attack, move forward, auto attack, move forward, or if you're retreating, mm. you know, auto attack, you and move me backwards, be out auto there attack, move backwards. Skulls right so this additional movement speed really helps you keep that damage on and close the gap while being safe. Wind tunnel, you have to do it. All right, those are the three builds. Now let's get into the try mode and see, uh, you know, what we can really do. I don't know why I left that. Uh, let's see. What? Uh, we don't want this. How's it going, generator. buddy? So let's go. Right, you know what? Maybe we'll try. Let's try this guy here. Yeah, we'll go with the white. All right. Come on. Sweetie. So, like I said, show what we're this hybrid for. build, gathering storm, updraft, boomerang, all that is trash. We're just gonna forget about it. Let's start off with the auto attack build. Choose a talent. Free Choose flyer. a talent. Choose a talent. Hammer gains. Choose a Secret talent. Weapon. Choose a talent. Mighty gust. Oh, Choose a talent. Sustained wind. Choose a talent. Crippling hammer. Choose a talent. Wind tunnel. Sounds great. Should we complete the quest? We'll do a few. I'd say I'd have about 40 done by the time we hit level 40. I should have anyway. All right. So with the Argus, you notice when you fill that out, you get the bonus damage. From the auto attack. Probably. All right, so regularly, we're hitting for 270. Now watch the hammer goes out, and we're hitting for 472. So let's try that on the hard. So you hit your trait, free the flyer, and look at that. It's just massive damage. They can't handle it. So here we go again. 271. Throw out the hammer. One, two, three. We got three bonuses off. One. Two, three, four. We got four bonuses off. So you basically increase your basic attack damage four times and hit for 2,000 damage rather than 1,000, which is huge. That's it. I'm going to walk up. I'm going to hit the enemy. 
Well, you know what? Forget this. Let's get rid of Arthas. No, he's a pain in the butt. Allied hero. Let's get rid of Malfoy either. To the sky. I don't know why it's doing that. It's a, that's a bug. Hots needs to fix. Alright. So, with almost all heroes in this game, the first thing I'm gonna do is auto attack. I can't express enough how much people in lower leagues underestimate auto attacks. Auto attacks. I don't care if you're a Ming, if you're a Lieutenant Morales, auto attacks matter. Let's and if you're not auto attacking, you're not playing hots correctly. Say you're a Li Ming, you're only pumping out 80 in auto attack. Okay, I get that. But put it this way if you are Ming and you do 80 in auto attack and you actually are concerned about your auto attacks and dishing them out along with your abilities and you do, let's just say, 300 a game. Well, 300 times 80. That's 24,000 extra damage throughout the game. I mean, that's huge. Over time, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of healing a healer's gonna have to heal. That's a lot of, you know, damage a Mediv is gonna have to negate. It's, it's so good. So, I like to walk up, auto attack, hammer, lightning, auto attack, trade, 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 trade. I did my trade a little slow on that. So, it, you want to hit the trait right before your hammer goes out. That way you get all that bonus, and you might get another one. Okay, ready? Here we go. Lightning trait, hammer. Boom, 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 boom. What do we get? Did we get five off or six? Let's do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of them. That's huge. That's so much damage. Now, when you're gusting against enemies, you're not going to want to gust them somewhere that's not attacking. Like that. See? You go through there, you can choke, and they can get away. No sweat. Now, if you were to gust the enemies, let's say these ones, against this wall, look, they're stuck. And then you just hit your combo, kill the member. I don't know how many times I've seen people engage with a gust, and, um, you know, they might gust them this way. Right? And they can just walk away down through here at that point, and it's not impactful. When rather, get back up. And you would choose to gust the enemy team into the wall, and then they're trapped. It, it's basically another ETC zone, except you can't interrupt them. You just can't. The only way out of it is a cleanse, or if you got lucky and you got stuck on the edge, like this guy maybe, and you can sidestep. Barrel roll. A lot of times, I'll see people, and they'll barrel roll onto an enemy just like that, and then, and then they might lose the engagement. It might not be favorable, and they're taking a lot of damage. And before they know it, they're running away, trying to retreat. And guess what? They don't have their barrel rolls and escape. This should be used mainly as an escape, nine out of ten times. The only time you want to use a barrel roll for an engage is if you know you're going to secure that kill. If you're not 100% sure that you're going to secure that kill, then you're, you're gambling with your life and your team's chances of victory. Save this for an escape, okay? Just like Muradin's uh, Dwarf Toss. I see these Muradins and they just jump in. It's so bad. It's so bad. And Anubrax, when they burrow charge in. Don't, don't do that. Like, be kind to yourself. Give yourself a hug by leaving this up and using it when you need to escape, okay? When you pick the auto attack build, you're going to want to pick it against a team that you're going to be able to stand and fight with. If, if you have a hero, like a, I mean, not necessarily you don't want to not pick it, but say you had a, a tier on the enemy team. Yeah, he's not going to just sit there and let you auto attack. He's going to throw his sword and he's going to back out and it's going to be tough. Now, against the stitches, heck yeah, the auto attack. Diablo, another great move. Um, Anubarak, another great move. Because 
he's all about the spell negation. And this will just cut through him like melted butter in a microwave. It'll be great. Uh, the times I wouldn't pick auto attack build, I wouldn't pick auto attack build into like an Artanis who can suppression pulse you and blind you for four seconds because then you're basically useless and all you have is a little mage damage from you, spell damage from the hammer and the lightning, which isn't going to be that impactful in a fight. Whereas your auto attacks clearly do thousands of damage. Uh, a death wing, I would use that against a death wing. I've actually had great success against the counterpick Zeratul or Valiras with the auto attack build uh, because they, I think most Nothing people uh, you know, think of Falstad as that lightning rod guy and they don't expect all that damage. Let's just think if a Zeratul jumped in right now and I throw out the hammer to the trade, boom, boom, boom. Guess what? I just did 3,000 damage. That's insane to a Zeratul. You can burst a Zeratul down just almost as fast as he can burst you if you hold your ground. Take it. See, look at that. That dude has about as much health as a Zeratul, and we just killed him that fast. Let's go on to Lightning Rod build. It's my favorite. Oops. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. All right. Lightning Rod. Dishonorable Discharge. We're going to get that quest. We're going to beef up the, uh, the build itself. Or, I mean, the, the talent, the lightning rod. Choose a talent. Static shield. You get that shield. Like I said, um, you don't necessarily, even on this build, I don't necessarily always go this. Sometimes I'll go hammer gains if, um, if I'm not taking tons of damage. If I'm taking a lot of damage, I'll definitely go static shield because I want to stay mobile. I want to be elusive. I don't want to take hits. Choose a talent. Charged up. Increase the number. Choose a talent. Arguments from me. Choose a yes, talent. you have to. Thunder strikes increase the range and the subsequent strikes. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Now. To the skies. When are you going to want to pick this? You can pick this anytime you want. The only time you're not going to want to pick lightning kill is against a team that has a lot of spell negation or, or has a lot of heroes that can just avoid lightning. So. Let me think about it. a Dahaka, right? A Dahaka. You put the lightning rod and it's hitting, and guess what? He burrows. Oh, and there goes your lightning damage. It's useless. Um, Aterial. I want to take lightning against Aterial. You know, you're hitting him, he throws his sword back, he's gone. And your stacks are gone. Uh, any sort of hero that can just immediately leave the area of your lightning rod, you don't you don't want to pick it because you're going to have big time trouble stacking and you're not going to be you know, very impactful for your team. Now, what I like to do, let's get an enemy here so we can show this. Let's pick, uh, let's pick a Diablo. Diablo, step right up. Now, when you're doing this, now with auto attack, you're going to sit and attack. Sit and attack. See that? That's the auto attack. Now, with the lightning rod, you're going to want to put it on him. And I just want to keep that distance, right? I want to keep it on him, but I don't want him to engage either. See all that damage? It's massive. Oh, well, let's complete the quest too. I'll show the real strength of it. Now, I like to pick lightning rods against heroes like... Uh, Jaina, Li Ming, KT to an extent. Any of those heroes that have AoE, because you can just say this isn't a Diablo, this is a Li Ming. You put that lightning rod on her, and you just keep moving around, and, and she's going to throw out magic missiles, and all you do is just move away from out of the way of the missiles. Or an orb, she's going to throw out an orb. I mean, you can just barrel roll away from the orb. How easy is that? You've impressed and me, that's hero. It. Now, while you're doing this, you're also going to want to auto attack. Just pump out that damage. Try to keep it. Auto attack too, if you can do it safely. If you can't, then don't. Just throw out your lightning, get your hits off. But I try to auto if I can, if I'm not taking a lot of damage. Now, if you're good, you can do bosses with the 
uh, auto attack build, but with lightning rod, it's extremely easy to do uh, bosses. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people know that false have can do bosses, but you can. I like to start off with the build just in case he hits me, and then just start moving around like that. He can't even hit me. I like to keep that up. Oh, I have two cooldowns, but that's not fair. Let's take that off so I can check. And I just hold right click. I'm not clicking, clicking, clicking. I'm just holding it down and moving my mouse. Just, nice. just going in a circle. Super simple. Get those auto attacks off if you can. Didn't hit anybody miss. See, and you just go in a circle. And that's it. Easy boss. Come on, we've got this. Now, as you play, you're gonna learn a, a few more nuances and little tricks for the false stat. But this is the basic parts of the build. Now, with false stat's trait, let's talk about the trait. Or not his trait, but his mount. Flight. It's got a decent range, but it's not huge. Like a Dahaka could go from one side of the map to the other side of the map. But where false stat really is half of them. So we see here's the here's the range of it. You see it on the mini map too. You see on the mini map, here's the circle. It's all like that. Now, just like with the Hawka, if you start the game and you stay in spawn and you fly to where your team is for that mid lane initial fight, then you are bad. Do not do that. This is a 75 second cooldown. It's not the quickest cooldown, and you want to save it. Now, you can use this one or two, one of two ways. You can use it to stay in the lane when an objective pops up. Say, for example, Cursed Hollow. You're at the top lane of Cursed Hollow. It says you have 20 seconds left. Your enemies and fall you're going against a Jaina. Jaina takes off to go to the objective. Well, what the flight will allow you to do is wait Killing spree. a little longer so you can get that extra wave of soak and give your, experience, your team an experience bonus while still allowing you to be on time for the objective. And you can just fly there while Jaina had to leave and miss that so you now have an experience. An excellent strike. Another way you might want to use it, I use it all the time for this, Who's next? is to bully a lane. So I'm in a lane with an enemy hero, and usually when you're in a lane, you want to have a favorable trait, right? You want to put out more damage on them and be more impactful than what they're doing to you. That way you're winning the lane and not losing. Right? So right now I'm getting favorable. Trait. Show no mercy. That was a favorable trait. Now if I was the Diablo, obviously it would be unfavorable. So what I'll do is I'll use this to allow me to bully. So I might get the unfavorable trade. Let's have a little unfavorable trade, okay? So I'm doing some damage, right? But the trade is actually unfavorable for me because, you know, I'm taking a lot of, a lot of hard hits. See, but I got him down. Sounds good. Now what I'll do is I'll hearth back, refill my health, and a lot of times my mana, my mana won't be like this. And the, now he's half health and I'm full health and I fly back and guess what? I have an advantage. It's like the trade was favorable for me and not unfavorable. Now I have the advantage and I kill the enemy hero, which allows me to get more soap, experience off the kill itself, and the experience off the towers and whatnot, and I'm gonna take a lead in my team. Yeah, quite a substantial lead at that. You know, it could be as much as a whole level if you do it right. So that's another way I use it. Another good way to use it is I'll see people go back or they'll be in hearth and they'll fly to like an objective on Towers of Doom and they shouldn't be doing that. You don't want to do that. You want to just just casually go to the objective, make sure you're on time and get the objective and then fly to your team who's most likely bot lane and help them out while the other hero is still on their way in transit to help their team. That'll give you that, you know, 
5, 10, 15 great. seconds of damage. Extra damage on the enemies that they won't have. And it makes a huge, huge difference. So make sure you're using this impactful and you're not just wasting it and squandering it over things that aren't impactful. You know, I see people doing unimpactful things all the time and it drives me nuts. Uh, Brightwing, you know, Brightwing's that poly when it doesn't matter. Same, same thing with this. Make sure it's it's being used for something that matters. If it doesn't, don't waste it. Uh, the sky is <laughs> False dad. Gotta be fast. If you're picking him, it should be two. you know an auto attack hero, and you're not picking him for his global presence. You're picking the wrong hero. Don't pick false dad. Don't get me wrong. False dad is great. Pump out. Crap ton of damage with the auto attack and the lightning bill. But don't pick him for that reason. Okay? He is a jack of all trades and his global well is what makes him powerful. It is his global along with his builds. But if you're picking him just for the auto attack build or just for his lightning rod mage build, you're picking the wrong hero. If you're picking him solely, like say you're on Hanamura. Don't, don't pick false dad just because you like false dad. Don't. Don't do it. Pick a Ming who does more mage damage and is better as in that role as a mage. Auto attack. You know, pick a Vala, pick a Raynor, pick a Tychus, pick a Zul'jin. They are all better than him flat out as an auto attack. But his well-roundedness with his global is what gives him strength. So you're going to want to be picking false out of Cursed Hollow, the Towers of Doom. They have the map. Uh, the, the tunnels in uh, Warhead Junction now, but I still like to pick Fall Set because that map is pretty huge. And it's, it's, uh, Garden of Terror, you're going to want to pick that. And even though Black Garden of Bay isn't Storm League, which it should be, all the maps should be in my opinion. You know, you can pick it on that. But a Volskaya, I wouldn't pick it on Volskaya. I wouldn't pick Fall Set on Hanamura. Trying to think of the other ones. I wouldn't pick it on Haunted Mines. I would not pick him on Battlefield of Eternity. But the, it's it's those macro maps with objectives you're gonna wanna pick. Alright guys, thanks for watching my video. Uh, I hope it helps you out. <laughs> Do some good stuff. Guys. Ciao.